right now. 267 22 Jiggy. Daddy Hey, Jiggy, what's happening, man? It must be that uh, David Bowie song. Jiggy play guitar. Jeff. It's a great name, man. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Presenting. I'm, I'm Mike Massey, and uh, you know, you can catch me on Jiggy Jag TV and uh, see a few of my trick shots there. Thank you very much. Jiggy Jaguar. I never knew what freedom was until I saw you lose yours. Okay, well, we are going to do this. We are going to be joined by Michael Harrison. We're going to go over here and we're going to get this figured out. And I believe we may have... Uh, there he is. Hey, there Look at that. Is. The fantastic, amazing Michael Harrison. How are you, sir? Turn up my volume here. Wow. Jiggy Jaguar. <laughs> Jigman Fraud, the one and only. <laughs> okay. Give me a few moments here. It doesn't sound very good. It's, I uh, it do you have headphones you can plug in or earbuds? Yeah, can you hear it? Look at that. Dan Perkins got a damn, damn headset. Uh, <laughs> look at that. He's like, he's, 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 do it. You are listening to the world famous Chiggy Jaguar radio broadcast. We are coast to coast and border to border, as they say, not the other thing. That's the other show. Uh, live video on our website, JiggyJaguar.com. And of course, live from the fantastic KJ Radio Studios in downtown Houston, Kansas. We are live each and every Monday through Friday, 2 Central, 3 Eastern, 12 Pacific, and 1 p.m. Mountain Standard. And of course, 24-7 at JiggyJaguar.com on the uh, TuneIn apps, Radio Loyalty, iHeartRadio, AMFM. 247.com, and for a complete list of our 50-plus AM FM stations, go to our website, JiggyJaguar.com. We have got a fantastic guest with us today, but before we get to our guest, we want to talk about the amazing panel that we have joining us today. First of all, I.Q. Al Rizzoli, the uh, best-selling author of Lifting the Veil, The True Faces of Muhammad and Islam, and he is joining us from the United Kingdom. We also have the amazing... Uh, best-selling author, the man about town, uh, just, I don't even know what to say. Dan Perkins from Dan Perkins Media is with us. And the legendary guest that we have today is the fantastic Michael Harrison from Talkers Magazine. And, uh, Michael, welcome to, uh, welcome to our fine feathered broadcast here, sir. Ah. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me, Jiggy Jaguar. <laughs> I have known Michael for a heck of a lot of years, and uh, I am so happy whenever I get a chance to have Michael on this show. He seems to be very busy, and uh, he has made uh, a lot of time for us today, so uh, I really, really, really appreciate that. Uh, but one of the things that... Besides, well, we're going to talk about all sorts of different things. We're going to talk about the Talkers Convention today coming up. We're going to talk about all sorts of different things. But um, you have uh, a band that you are involved in, Gun Hill Road. Talk to us a little bit about what Gun Hill Road is. Gun Hill Road for me is an awful lot of fun. Um, it's a band that's been around since um, I think 1969. I became familiar with Gun Hill Road back in 1971 when I was uh, doing the morning show on WNEW FM. It was a, uh, a progressive rock station, kind of legendary. Some of your, some of your listeners and viewers may know it yep. or have heard about it. Yep. Uh, we were able to play basically within a limited universe, but we were able to play whatever we wanted. And um, I kind of championed that band. They were a New York-based band. They had two albums, one on Mercury, one on... Um, Kama Sutra, and um, they had uh, one hit single on Top 40 Radio called Back When My Hair Was Short. To make a long story short, I loved the band. I used to play them every day, became friendly with them, and uh, as the 70s unfolded, we all went our separate ways, and then all of a sudden, in the uh, 21st century, they decided to get back together uh, about uh, 14 years ago, and um, did a reunion concert, and then did a reunion concert at the... Um, at the bitter end in New York, I emceed it, got involved with them again, made a, a couple of videos for them. They wound up being in a documentary movie, and lo and behold, I'm a member of the band. <laughs> I'm a singer, and I'm a songwriter. 
And now, we're, it, instead of it being a trio, it's a four-man band. Um, Steve awesome. Goldrich, uh, Paul Reich, Brian Coonan, and Michael Harrison, rock star. And uh, i got to tell you, Jiggy, I am having the time of my life. It's so much fun. <laughs> so... This is just amazing. How can people keep up with the band online? Do you guys have social media or websites or any of these yeah, things? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we, we have some social media. We're basically old school. Um, the website is gunhillroadmusic.com. And that has the whole history of the band going all the way back to the 70s. It uh, has all the songs, um, the albums, uh, the, the album that uh, was made uh, back when they got together again called Every 40 Years, had 19 tracks on it. Um, then we did a fifth, a fourth album called What Year Is It? Or what Year Is This? And then uh, now we're working on the fifth album, but we've modernized and now we release tracks individually as opposed to the idea of an album, uh, which is you know kind of an old school concept. And our songs have evolved into really... Uh, multi-genre jazz uh, folk rock old rock new rock electric rock and the lyrics uh, one of my um, contributions to the new direction of the band uh, for the last few years has been to have songs that are compatible with talk radio meaning we don't make we don't make these albums to be played on music radio you you can you know you could die <laughs> waiting for music radio to discover anything new these days. But because our songs are provocative, like one song is called Idiots, another song uh, that we have out right now called S Damn Scammers, Get Off My Phone. Yes, that's what I was um, getting ready to transition to there. The, uh, and, uh, the we master did a song of the segue. Was, yeah, I was working with uh, the United Nations um, as executive advisor to World Radio Day, and we did a uh, World Radio Day song about the the virtues of radio as a platform. I mean, radio has to be defended here in the 21st century. Yes. I did a song about animal rights and cosmic consciousness, how we humans have to become uh, more uh, sensitive to the consciousness of animals on our planet and treat them kindly. That was called I Know You're Real. And we've, got, we've gotten tens of thousands of views and followings and, and, and followers and downloads all over the internet. We're not making any money, but then again, you know, unless you go on a tour and sell a lot of t-shirts, you don't make money at it. But we've got this growing huge fan base that goes all the way back to the hippies of the late 60s and early 70s to Gen Zers and even younger today. Um, so basically, if people, like if you want to see the scammers video our videos are very clever we use yes. ai and we use some clips and art and, and different things um the scammers video.com scammers video.com is where you can see that you can go to um uh, idiots video.com <laughs> but if you go to gun hill road music.com you can see it all and and our videos are just as important as the music um i, I matter of fact I, I consider us to be at this point a group that makes music videos as opposed to just audio. And, That's awesome. uh, and again, it's a lot of fun. I really appreciate you giving me a chance to, to talk about it. Well, because are, this is... Are, I sound like you. There's no place to talk about it. Well, I always... When, when I started seeing this pop up in the Talker's Newsletter, uh, which I have had the pleasure of being uh, in mentioned over a few years, which usually yeah. means that when, when you start when you see me mentioned in the talkers magazine um daily newsletter you always hear these 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 cries and these uh, and this anger and usually that's people in the radio industry because i'm getting positive press but <laughs> um what has been the feedback that you've gotten on this scammers video oh everybody loves it i i, I mean I, I just wish more people <laughs> uh, were exposed to it, but those people that see the video and hear the music and get the message, especially with scammers, because come on, damn scammers, get off my phone. It tells the whole thing. The get off my phone is a bit of a uh, homage to the late Bob Grant. He would go, get off my phone. <laughs> and uh, so it's damn scammers, get off my phone. And it's a basically, it's an outraged guy, you know, screaming at the scammer. I'm you know, I'm going to, 
there's there's one line that's really funny. I, 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 it's a little risque. It says, send a drone in their direction and deflate their big erection. F them up. You know? Wow. Like, <laughs> Getting that just, played on talk radio these days. A, a couple of places have beeped a few things. And, um, but, I would say. Hey, you know, we don't say anything that you don't hear on Law and Order. Yes. I mean, look at network television and what they get away with. Why is radio still scrutinized? <laughs> you know, ooh, radio is, is so edgy. And network TV gets away with everything uh, in terms of we still have that language issue. Yes. As a matter of fact, one of the things that holds radio back is that it's still regulated as if it were the only game in town and it goes against all this big time competition that's unregulated yes and um and that's a that's a whole issue unto itself I yes mean, we we, go we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna get to the radio r radio issue believe me um we have got the fantastic Michael Harrison with us today. I want to start with Dan Perkins. Dan, do you have any... Uh, I, I know that you used to be a music DJ back in the day. I know you've probably well, got some questions for Mr. Harrison. A long time ago, in the, in, the, in the late 60s, early 70s, I was a music DJ on WCOL Radio in Columbus, Ohio. Great station. Oh, yeah. It was, and, and then I switched, I switched, stayed on the same station, I went from uh, a DJ to doing talk radio. I was doing talk radio in Columbus, Ohio, before Rush Limbaugh was even on the air. <laughs> I mean, that's that's how old I am and how far back I go. But um, anyway, I'm curious. Um, uh, I want to. I want to make. I listened to what you were saying, and I was fascinated. I want to help you. Okay. <laughs> want to help me? Wow. I want, to help you. I want to help you reach a broader audience. Yeah. You got a piece of paper and a pencil? I have to have a paper and pencil. <laughs> yeah, you got to write something down. He's got to. He's got to do homework here today. My, 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 Michael thought this was a guest appearance. He, he didn't realize that. that there, I didn't there realize there was an obligation to to <laughs> write things down. I'm just going to give you. Look, at, give this. You look at this. Look at this. The link. I'm not going to make you I, say I you're going to do it. It's up to you. I'm, I'm going to write this down because this sounds serious. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I love Michael. What do I do? Go ahead, Dan. Um, what do you got do for I him? Go to yournews.com. Yournews.com. Dot com. It is one of the fastest growing websites in the country. They got over 20 million page views in December. 20 million. And you can go on there and you can post your travel schedule, your anything you want about your group and get it broadcast all over the country for free. Wow. All right. Your, your now, news. Wait, 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 wait. Who, who do I have to pay? Nobody. <laughs> no, you ain't got to pay nobody. And there are people actually watching this, or yeah. there are 20 yeah. million people? 20 million or so. I mean, exposed. Not, not as many as you probably get right now, but 20 million probably could see it. But so if I, get, if I put our video on this website the next day, I'll have 20 million <laughs> views? You, no, you won't have 20 million views, but you have a, put a stake in the ground that says, this is another place where you can see us, and you can build an audience the more you post, the more you give people, the greater you'll attract, and you can attract. That's great. Well, wow. maybe I'll have a future in this, you know. I'd, 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 <laughs> I'd love a to future you, in be able to make a living using, doing this. Are you using, um, uh, what other social media are you using? Yeah, what, what, what are you guys <laughs> doing for marketing? We don't do any marketing. <laughs> you, we just you take have music a, and put it. a site on Rumble? We, we, we just put it, no, we just put it out there. We tell people in talkers, we have it on YouTube, and uh, we have a website. We, we're not, we're not um, hustling this thing. <laughs> not hustling this thing. We're, we're on to the next song. We're having a good time. I appreciate the advice, though. But, yeah. um, now, I, I, so I, I, when you get to, 
when, when you get too caught up in uh, like me, uh, follow me, subscribe to me, it's like everybody in the world is 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 now in the ratings business. Everybody but, but, everybody but, but, is a um, is a media uh, professional. It's the thing um, you have to understand about your uh, news and Rumble. Content is the king. That's what I have to understand. Oh, okay. Content is the king. If you go on and just blab and you don't have something that people can get a hold of and, and have an interest in, the reason why I'm talking to you about that, no pun intended, of your talk magazine. But talkers. Talkers magazine. Recent report just came out that 70% of high school senior boys are more conservative than previous generations. You're kidding. No, they also they also found out through surveys that young people are blowing past TikTok and all of these things where they have determined they are not getting value, they're being manipulated, and so they're starting to shut it off. They're looking for old school traditional stuff. And what's happening is that young people, thank God, are going back to God, too. They found out that all the stuff, that the superficial stuff, wasn't delivering anything of what they really needed. So they're accepting conservative values. They're finding a relationship with the Lord wherever they are. And they want, they want content, they want quality content. If they're, wherever they're listening, whether it's on on the internet or whether it's on uh, a talk radio, whatever it is, they're looking for something that tells them something that maybe they don't know or a perspective that they don't have. And so what I'm saying is that your old school is going to be new school again with just a little bit of promotion. You might be surprised <laughs> and you might be able to make some money, too. Wow, what a concept. <laughs> what a concept. Speaking okay. of uh sp thank you. But before before we before we get into the radio discussion because believe me it's coming. Um IQ Al Rizzoli joins us. Uh IQ, do you have any questions for the legendary Michael Harrison concerning his his band and and, and everything he's got going, my friend? I love the idea that we are going back in time instead of staying where we are or going to the future. But what I'm worried about, no, sorry, what I'm surprised at is what Dan just said, that 70% of the young people whom I believe have got no two brain cells of logic <laughs> is saying now they are literally going conservative, which is something astounding. If it's true, yes. it's um, remarkable. Maybe this is the turning point where America will survive. What do you think, Dan? Well, what, what the person was saying today, the implications, politically, the implication is when this generation graduates from high school and gets to be voting age, they're going to have a significant impact on the direction of the political process in the country. It's going to be more conservative. And doesn't bode well for the Democrats. But but I th I think that th that going going back in time as as you've done with your stuff, I think you've got a you've got a fascinating theme that you could really build on uh, in social media, and uh, you got to be find a way to make your albums available online, either as a as a download or old school buying the CD or whatever it is. Yeah, because people are actually, th 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 this is the thing, Michael, which I, I find amazing about all this, is that, and I've started interviewing various older musicians, and they're getting traction. And I know that you guys are just doing this to have fun. But I think, actually, you could probably get some traction with this damn thing. <laughs> well, I mean, which it, is part it, of the it, reason it, why I wanted to have you on today. 
First of all, first of all, first of all, traction is a subjective thing. You know, it depends on what you consider traction. It's yes. very difficult to get traction today in anything because there's so many different channels, so many different voices. Yes. I call it a noisy world. I do want to make one correction here. I am not here advocating old school. I was sort of <laughs> making fun of ourselves. I am not a merchant of nostalgia. I am a historian. And there's a huge difference between understanding history and living in the past. I do not live in the past, never have, never will. I believe in the future, and uh, but I think it's a much better future. I think that we have an idea of where we're going if we know where we've been. One of the yeah. problems with young people today, and uh, I don't mean to sound like I'm here to criticize young people, but one of the problems they have is that they're very quick to say, oh, I don't know, that was before my time, as if anything not only before their time, but before an hour ago, is no longer relevant. We live in bubbles of now. And it's all nice, you know, to live in the now and all that. However, uh, you got to know what was yesterday and you have to have an idea what tomorrow. The flow of time is very important. So I'm not a merchant of nostalgia. I do appreciate all the kind things that have been said about um, the old school aspects of what we're doing. I, um, I don't mean to be arrogant, but I'm very schooled in uh, new media and uh, well, social and the, media and yes. media in general, um, but I'm not here to plug something. <laughs> I'm here out of respect for, for Jiggy Jaguar yes. and his very interesting career that I have an interesting perspective on. Oh, and uh, it's my way of saying, it's my way of saying, hey man, I respect you and I'm happy to have a chance to be with you again. Yes. Um, and, and, and that's it in a nutshell. Uh, in terms of 70% are turning conservative and all this, you know, statistics, you know, can be twisted any way you like. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember I've been reporting on in part of conservative talk radio for the last 35 years. 35 years. Uh, in talkers. <laughs> so I, I know all about the stats <laughs> about uh, the politics of the country. It's all very interesting, though. But I'm not a merchant of nostalgia. I do not think we should go old school. And yes, I agree. If we promote on uh, social media and really take it very seriously, um, we'll have more people involved in our in our following. And, and we're doing it as best we can yes. without making it uh, an obsession or flagrantly going out and taking advantage of the platforms we already have to promote something um, totally commercially. Okay. Let me, let me if I can, Jim, uh, switch to talk radio. Yes. And, uh, and, but before, before we get to, before we, before we let you jump in there, I have just an odd question that I thought about the other day. And I, I, I'd, I'd got an email and was confirming with Michael on the booking and everything. And I was thinking about something and I've been trying to track down the information. I haven't been able, I'm sure Michael knows back forward, upside, um, downside, all the, um, all the answers to what I'm about to ask him. But, uh, one of the things I thought was so weird, uh, with all these various, you know, there, there's there, there's all these things that, that go on and, you know, people pass away and they leave things. And one of the things I thought was so odd, and maybe, like I said, Michael probably has all the info on this, so I'm probably just wasting my breath at this point. As Cousin Chris from Jiggy Jag TV used to say, don't waste all that breath because when, when you're on your bedside, you're going to wonder where all that breath is. You're going to want it back. Um Michael, when the great Rush Limbaugh passed away and his wife reportedly was going to put the the compound up for sale, why didn't a talk radio person buy that? Because it already had a studio in it. <laughs> <laughs> what a ridiculous question. I think you're kidding me. Why did a talk radio person buy it? Because it had yeah. a studio in it? You can build a studio for a couple well, of Well, I know. In your, in your, in your I apartment. Know. Why the hell do you have to buy a, a, a castle in Palm Beach? <laughs> to have have a, why didn't you buy it? Then you well, I probably should have, and then I Looked then like I wouldn't have to. Have a studio? Where'd you get that mic? Look at that <laughs> electric voice microphone! My gosh! All you need now is a is a mansion, and you're Rush Limbaugh. There you go. That's it. Man, man, cow should have bought it. That, that that's what should have happened. But um, Michael Harrison joins us today from Talkers Magazine. I love Talkers Magazine. One of the things that we were talking about. 
during the music discussion was radio and how we're both big fans of radio. Why is it that the the broadcast companies have gotten away from radio? They've taken it out of their name. They they don't iHeart is is iHeart now. At one point they were in uh you know, they had radio in their name. Hell, they even buried the domain radio.com. They're like, uh, we're going we're going we're going to keep it. We're not going to put it up for sale, but we're going to talk about it. Why is it radio is so afraid of radio? Radio, you, you, you've answered the question with the question, why is radio so afraid of radio? You're right. Yes. Why? It, it, it's a rhetorical question. It makes a statement. The answer is radio is afraid of radio because radio is afraid of radio. That's, that's what's happening. And I recently wrote uh, or, or said on the air, and then it was written in an article, yes. that um, throwing the word radio out and replacing it with audio is a form of cowardice. And I'm not saying that in a negative sense. It's, yes. it's industrial cowardice. It's you don't believe in the specialness of this magnificent platform that has existed now for over 100 years and is still around the world one of the most trusted forms of media by the public. Yes. If you don't believe in it, you, that's because you don't understand it. Calling radio audio would be like the restaurant industry putting up a sign in front of every restaurant calling it food or every individual car dealer, Buicks, Cadillacs, Bentleys, Rolls Royce, Honda, saying transportation. Uh, it, all radio is audio, uh, basically. Uh, yeah. If you really want to expand it, you can. There could yeah. be radio on video. But radio is audio. But all audio is not radio. And what radio, what these people that you're talking about uh, have to do is they have to come up with an understanding of what radio means. Yes. What is radio? Now, there's this whole story Louis Armstrong once said to some woman who said, what's jazz? And he said, if you have to ask, you'll never understand. <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's one awesome. way of looking that's at awesome. it. But radio is a very interesting platform. It's a very interesting medium. It's not just limited to AM yes. and FM. It's not even limited anymore to the old uh, paradigm that we call the stick, where it's a tower and a license and a you know a transmitter yes. and everybody is in the same place. But it's still radio. Just like you can watch, you know, Ben Hur or um, uh, Oppenheimer uh, uh, on on television. It doesn't make it television. It's still cinema. It's still a film. It's still a movie. Yes. You got to know media theory. You got to understand definitions. And they don't get that. They any any you know with all res due respect to Odyssey and to, to companies that are you know oh, we're audio we're audio yeah. yeah that's like you know the, the railroad the railroads we didn't understand we were transportation and and the airlines took everything away from us but no if you're in the railroad business there's still railroads and they still play a role <laughs> you got to you, you got to stay in your lane now radio is a con it's an aesthetic it's like a like a Steely Dan album. It's an aesthetic, and it can be I didn't think I'd get a Steely people. Dan reference on, on, on this day. That is amazing. Thank you, Mike. But you get the point? I know you get the point. <laughs> yes. You're, you're yes. about media. You're, you're, that's, you, you're, you're preoccupied, preoccupied with media and the theory thereof. And I see that uh, we have some – Dan has an interesting look on his face. So Dan, I, I, he go. Thinks, I, I know you want to jump in there. Yeah, I, I understand um, – what, what you're talking about, but but radio, whatever you want to call it, radio, when I was growing up, was nothing like it is today. Radio has evolved and changed, and we have music, we have country and western, but we also have a new fashion of product called talk radio. <laughs> talk radio is an evolution of radio that is relatively new in the last 20, 30 years, out of that 100-year history, it's a very small percentage of what's going on. You still have music stations that are playing music, whether whatever their genre is. But talk radio, if you look at the top 10 radio shows, 
today, they're all talk. They're not music. They're talk. Why? Because there's a need on the part of the American consumer and consumers around the world to try and figure out what the hell is going on in their community, in their state, or in their nation, or the world. And while I love music, music isn't the answer to that question. And we've got a bifurcated media where we have terrestrial radio and TV that is dominated by the people who have a different agenda. And so we have, yes, I'm on radio, Jim's on radio, I have my own network. I have 11 shows on my network of people that have come to me and, and want to be on the radio, but they want to get their message across. So radio has changed, it's evolved. There is room for everything, but the greatest evolution, in my opinion, in radio in the last 100 years is talk radio. Really? Well, I'm happy to hear you say that because uh, I'm the publisher of Talkers Magazine. <laughs> Good. I think that is amazing. Do you not agree with that? I mean, it's great. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're absolutely right. However, I want to point out something. Okay. The first format on radio, the first show on radio was talk, not music. And um, don't forget the great uh, work of people like Edward R. Murrow during World War yep. II broadcasting from yep. the streets of London. And don't forget about Orson Welles and his historic uh, War of the World Worlds World, broadcast. World, baby. That, uh, so it's not like talk radio uh, hasn't existed all the way back to the beginning of radio. And it's not like music doesn't play a role in broadcasting on radio um, at this point. But the, the talk format, the modern era of talk radio, which is how I describe it, starting uh, with the repeal of the Fairness Doctrine uh, in uh, the, um, the late 80s, uh, yeah. is, a, is a chapter in radio. It's still part of, it's part of the modern era. And I would say during the modern era, uh, talk has been the driving force. All of the famous radio personalities are talk show hosts. I mean, there's some well-known music personalities, but not many anymore. Yeah. Uh, it's mostly talk show hosts. And talk radio has had more of an impact on politics and popular culture than uh, perhaps music radio ever did at the height of its day. Um, even the president of the United States and when I say the president, I mean the institution. I mean Biden. I mean Trump. I mean Obama. I mean Bush. I mean yeah. Reagan. I mean yeah. the other Bush. I mean, we can go all the way back to <laughs> Bill Clinton, uh, who was really the, one of the first modern era presidents who completely understood talk radio. He got it. And um, talk radio has a direct impact on policy. Talk radio is also, and when I say talk radio, I also mean talk media. The, 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 the children, the media cousins and children of talk radio yeah. that, that were influenced on television, podcasting, satellite, cable. Um, they, they are the most accurate bellwether of American public opinion in the media yes, today. Very mm -hmm. much so. So you and I are on the same page about that. Um, I'm just not sure when you're talking to me if, if, if you're preaching to the choir or you think that I have yet to be converted. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure where you're coming from in terms of... Well, so I'm, you know, I'm not familiar with your magazine, so I... I that's, a, that's obvious. And, and uh, it's the first time, first time I've ever talked with you, so uh, I can only go on, on what I'm hearing. Uh, but but I, I, I do agree that, that the, the talk radio, the classic talk radio is where people of all ages uh, are, are turning to to try and find an objective voice that's telling them what they believe to be true or what's happening in their world. And um, uh, terrestrial uh, has the ability, because of television, to bring those images directly live into your living room. But they can also bring them to you over the internet on your uh, on your computer, I do think that 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 it's it's also going through another change, and I think that that 
um, maybe the you wouldn't agree with this that the, perhaps the airways are oversaturated. There's too much choice in talk radio. Too many shows. Too much choice in talk radio. Yes. Oh, that's an interesting premise. Um, I don't think there's enough choice in talk radio. I think that talk radio is missing the the, the boat by not having more genres politically and pop culturally. I think it's missing many opportunities. Uh, a lot of people immediately think when they hear talk radio, they think of uh, Rush Limbaugh style talk radio or yeah. conservative political talk radio. Uh, no, there, there. Well, first of all, there are many different kinds of talk radio, but not as many as there could be. There's sports talk radio. There's all news radio. Uh, there's public radio, which tends to be liberal but doesn't consider itself radio. Yeah. Uh, that, now, people never talk about that in the conversation about radio. Like public radio is off on its own, its own world. It isn't. It's yeah. radio. It's radio. <laughs> and um, so there are different kinds of talk radio, but hardly as many kinds as there should be. I mean, if I owned a radio chain, uh, I wouldn't have some low-rated adult contemporary station. Uh, on FM, I'd put some kind of a new talk format on it. Um, I wouldn't have um, uh, stations that have two for Tuesdays and hump days and uh, finally a Friday. And they're still doing stuff from 1980 on yes. some of those music stations. It's ridiculous. They shouldn't. Be and they gave up their franchise and personality. Young people used to listen oh, to music radio because they liked go. the DJs who presented the music yep. and they engaged in a thing that we call music discovery. There's no music discovery anymore no. on music radio unless you haven't discovered Taylor Swift. Then you can find out about her. Uh, so, you know, I get what you're saying. I think the thing that we're dealing with, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a confusing, problematic thing is that there's too much saturation in terms of competition for, hum for human beings' attention, that the, the fractionalization of it has dealt a blow to popular culture yes. in terms of us all being on somewhat of the same page that give us a culture, give us a nation, um, where people know what movie wins the Academy Award, yeah. what Broadway show got the Tony, what TV shows are popular. We have celebrities out there now that are only known to little bubble audiences that watch that show on which streaming subscription people can afford. Yes. Um, there's no Ed Sullivan show. There's no Milton Berle, you know, and on Tuesday night during the commercial breaks, the water level went down because everybody went to the bathroom and flushed their toilets at the same time. The only thing that, is, that we have anymore that is this mystical um, unified collection of consciousness is the Super Bowl. That's the it. Super, and that's why commercials are $10 billion for 30 cents. The Super Bowl, one channel on television, one channel on radio, everybody's tuned in. Election night's not that way. Everybody's tuned in, but they're watching different channels, different takes, different yeah. uh, daily dances of affirmation. You know, we, we tell you the truth. We tell you what you want to hear. That's right. Um, targeted <laughs> audiences. So it's a complicated situation, to say the least. Uh, and you touch on some interesting points. Let me ask you another kind of sidebar question. Well, I mean, ask a question. Don't make a statement. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is the reason that liberal talk radio never succeeded in America? Well, it succeeds as public radio. I already yeah. answered that yeah. question. Yeah. But you, uh, public you, radio is very successful well, yeah. and it is liberal um, because the trends go where the talent lies. And they haven't had great talent on liberal yes. talk radio. If, if Rush Limbaugh were a liberal, uh, there would be um, more um, of an audience for it. Yeah. That's one reason. Another reason is that, um, as, and you pointed it out before, there has been a movement toward conservatism uh, in the past 25, 30 years that talk radio, by and large, has capitalized on. I mean, why why was there British rock and roll and not French rock and roll? <laughs> why why did that happen? Because the trends go where the talent lies. Yes. When Tiger Woods came up, all of a sudden golf became popular. Yes. When when Bobby Fischer back in the early days was playing chess, all of a sudden everybody was buying chess sets. <laughs> There's a relationship between talent and trends, and then the audience follows. Yes. And that's one of 
a very complicated set of reasons why conservative commercial radio has been more uh, successful by the measurement of commercial success than um, liberal talk radio. We have a tremendous guest with us today. Uh, Talkers.com, the amazing Michael Harrison. Let's talk about your Talkers conference that's coming up in June. Uh, I have always, this has been always one of my goals was to get to the Talkers conference at some point. Wait, wait, why haven't you come? I don't know. This, Probably this is laziness. The 27th, 27th annual conference. Yes. Talk Seven to years. us about it. Um, what what, what can people expect from the event? What is the event for people that have been hiding under a rock and don't know what it is? Talk to us about this. Incredible. Well, I, I don't know if people um, consuming this, I mean, watching and listening to this broadcast would care. It's not meant for the public. Yeah. It's an inside industry conference. It's been going on now for 27 years. Yeah. Not the first time I did a conference. I used to do the radio and record conferences, the billboard conferences. Yep. I've been doing radio conferences for as long as I've been in radio. <laughs> um, but this is kind of a cool conference. It, it's focused on talk radio, which is the center of the hub, and all of the other media that are extensions of talk radio. Um, online radio, podcasting, satellite radio, and even cable news talk television, a la Fox News Channel, MSNBC, CNN, and uh, Newsmax, and all the rest. Yeah. Um, it's a gathering of several hundred. You can't get in unless you are somehow working in the in media. The business. Yeah. It's not meant for the public. It doesn't, we don't deal with politics. We don't deal with um, uh, performing. It's a conference in which the movers and shakers, the leaders, the thought leaders, and the people on the rise and people who are really dedicated to the industry get together to talk about issues of importance to the industry. And um, as evidenced by the fact that it's now in its 27th year, and every year they always say, this was the best one, which I, of course, know is not the case every year, but as long as people say that, I'm happy. I know which ones are the best ones and not so good. They're all pretty good, though. Yeah. Um, uh, have I answered your question? I'm not. I, I'm not here to promote it. No, 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 no. I just, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the the event itself. You, you, you have you have awards that you give out to folks. There's yeah. seminars, all these various things. Yeah, uh, it it has evolved. It originally was called the New Media Seminar, and uh, it debuted in the late '90s, and its um, mission was to help. And Talkers Magazine's mission has been major mission over the last 34 years that it's been in existence, has been to help the radio industry, the terrestrial radio industry, evolve and integrate into the 21st century digital media era. Yeah. This has been this has been the basic mission to help radio go from analog to digital without destroying the meaning and the essence, the aesthetic, as we said, <laughs> of radio. Yeah. And we're still, in, we're still doing that mission. We don't call it the new media seminar anymore because the new media is not that new anymore. Uh, we've succeeded in making people aware that podcasting is coming and is important. We've done that. But uh, one of the other reasons is I noticed over the years that people were not calling it the new media seminar anymore. They were calling it talkers. I'll see you at Talkers. When are you going? To, are you going to Talkers? It, yeah. it had the same name as the magazine, Talkers. So we just call it now Talkers 2024, or whatever the year is, yeah. and give them uh, some kind of a subtitle. The subtitle of this year's convention coming up. We call it a convention too. Coming up on uh, June seventh at Hofstra University is Talkers 2024 Radio and Beyond. And, and, and that really is the essence of what we're dealing with. What is radio and where is it going while maintaining its radio-ness? And, that's what, and that's, what the, that's what the conference is about. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, we have got Michael Harrison with us today, Talkers.com. Uh, if you want to get all the information on, on what he's doing over there and some of the fine folks that he works with. Uh, you mentioned some of the different formats, and we were talking about, you know, 
talk radio format, why, why isn't a little bit more, you know, expansive? One of the things, obviously, uh, as anybody who knows me uh, knows, my favorite format, which I don't think they hardly do anymore, was the hot talk format. Uh, the Tom Likases, the Man Cows, you know, all them. Uh, that was real big in the late 90s going into the 2000s. And, of course, as we know, uh, after the Janet Jackson incident at the Super Bowl, slowly but surely, everyone was kind of thrown out of the business. <laughs> and now you have guys like Lycus who are on the Internet. You have Opie and Anthony who are not even together anymore. And Man Cow thinks he's Sean Hannity now. There's all sorts of different things going on. Why do you think the hot talk format Besides the Janet Jackson incident, uh, I'll say the same reason that the new media seminar was no longer the new media seminar. What's new yeah. gets old. What's hot gets cold. I mean, it, it, it's. I mean, I, I think Howard Stern diminished his importance. I think he's incredibly important and incredibly yes. talented. Don't get me wrong. But by going to a place where they let him say whatever he wants, he diminished. The whole the whole deal yes. was that he was doing it in a restrained, restricted platform. Yes. He was pushing the boundaries. But when there are no boundaries to push, you know, it's some old guy doing soft core porn. Yes. Yeah, soft core porn. Shock jocks. The only thing that we have right now is a shock. We had a shock president. Donald Trump took over the role that the shock jocks had, and he yep. he took all that st all that shtick and became a shock president. Yes, well, there's, no, there's nothing left for the talk show hosts to be shocking about. <laughs> so, you know, these guys that you mentioned, they were very talented in their time, and they played a role. But the wheel keeps turning, society yes. keeps evolving, the issues keep um, you know coming up and and fading out. New becomes old. Um, Nothing is inherently hip. Yeah. Hipness is a very subjective term. What's hip in one chapter becomes mainstream in the next chapter. You touched upon it like, oh, my gosh, Jiggy Jaguar is in Parker's magazine. What's wrong with the world? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, what, what, what's, what's underground becomes mainstream. Then it becomes passe. The very same thing that was considered cutting edge is now passe. And then it becomes retro. And then it becomes forgotten. And yes. then all of a sudden it becomes new again because people die and new people come up. It took me a long time to come to that realization that nothing is inherently hip. And nothing is inherently even good. I call it the favorite pizza syndrome. Ask people about pizza. You know, we all know what pizza is. Yep. You will find that most people, 70% of all young people, you, you will find that most people will tell you the best pizza they ever had will coincidentally be the place in the town the little pizza joint that they grew up with it and and favorite songs are the ones that it's not musicological it's sociological it's where yes. were you and what were you doing when you heard it and and so you got to keep you got to keep up and it's like this thing with ai people are worried is ai going to take our jobs if you do warmed over burnt out talking points yeah ai is going to do it with a better voice and it's going to have more information at its command in a second you ever have but if you remain original you stay ahead of ai yep. ai will never catch you It'll always be better than you. and it's the same thing so i i went on a little too long with no 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 you're good that's why we got you here baby that's why we got you here. so uh dan or iq do you guys have any questions for the uh for for mr harrison from talkers magazine how, how many people will you see at talkers yeah what what is what what is, what is what is that like because i've seen photos over the years and i've heard stories of a who's who at these things but then i hear other years where it's like well you know sean hannity wasn't there this year and this guy wasn't there this year and i i'll see the list and i'm like huh well that's odd so yeah what what, what is what is the audience I... and the and the attendance like from the people inside the industry that go to that go to the convention about three about 300 people and, and we have about 60 speakers in one day 
I, I, I don't know whether it depends on Sean Hannity being there. <laughs> well, I there know, year, I know, but, but I mean... Um, but um, uh, John Katsimatidis was there speaking. Um, Chris Ruddy, the uh, creator of Newsmax. Creator of Newsmax, there. that's right. Uh, I could, I could, I mean, it always has top people. Yeah. Always. Um, there are people that just don't like the industry. Oh, you know, look at the, you know, and, and, they'll, and they'll find fault with whatever. I can't, I can't do anything about that. As a matter of fact, there are times I don't like the industry either. Um, I am a booster of talk radio, but I'm not a mindless booster of it. I'm also a critic. Uh, I That's speak, why I like you. I consider to be the truth. Um, and uh, if suddenly uh, there are no more interesting people in the business, well, that'll be the end of the talkers conference. Yeah. And if suddenly talk radio goes down, we'll go down too. I'm not going to chase uh, success beyond it. I have I made a commitment that the hub of uh, the core of Talkers Magazine, Talkers Media, Talkers Radio Shows, Talkers Con all the talk stuff, yeah. the core of it will be radio. We'll talk about podcasting. We'll talk about cable news, talk television. We'll talk about satellite radio. We'll talk about all the other things out there. But the core of it will be radio. That means radio people. That means radio conversation. That means the aesthetic of radio I discussed before. And um, eventually, you know, it'll run its course as everything does, as we all do. But not right now. We're still, we're still going. <laughs> IQ Alrizoli, do you have any uh, anything you want to add to the conversation? We, we've kind of... Uh... I know you like I'm to amazed. listen. I'm amazed at Michael Harrison's dedication and his total knowledge, literally total knowledge of what he's talking about. Thank wow. you, Mike. It's amazing to listen to you, honestly. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. No, I mean, you're not arrogant, but you're knowledgeable without being are you arrogant. arrogant? <laughs> No, I said you are not arrogant. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Although you are very knowledgeable, you are not arrogant about oh, it. Thank I you. like that. No, because yes. I, the worst thing that anybody could be in this life, in my opinion, and this, this goes way beyond radio. This is just <laughs> human beings. That's right. Arrogance. I think that arrogance is a fatal flaw. It'll bring you down. It, it, none of us have the right to be arrogant that's why, why i compliment you said you. i look arrogant i, I went oh my god <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no 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 but i pre no, your I, knowledge yeah, is I amazing work. your knowledge is amazing your dedication and passion is fantastic i commend you thank uh, you thank you very much you're very kind thank you thank go you ahead dan much. i was just curious as a an industry expert um <clears throat> we've talked a little bit about what's going on in the industry um, are the number of stations expanding or terrestrial expanding or contracting and what's happening to the general level of revenue in radio? Well, that's good questions. Those are very good questions. <laughs> I, I, I can't answer uh, empirically whether the number of stations is expanding or contracting because with every station that goes out of business and a lot of them do there are all kinds of new kinds of stations on the air hd stations and yep. and all you know translators and so the the number of stations actual individual outlets is in flux um uh, in terms of revenue revenue has been a problem uh revenue is down and um uh, alarmingly so. However, it should also be pointed out that revenue is down in the newspaper business. Revenue is down in the television station business. Um, and I believe revenue is severely down for various reasons in the motion picture business. So um, anything that sells advertising, <clears throat> the revenue is down because there, there are these giant behemoths that are eating everybody's lunch that are even being fed and supported by the people who are being decimated, and that is big tech. Google, Facebook, um, Instagram, uh, X, <laughs> you know, all, all of these social media platforms that you um, kindly and wisely advised me to exploit for Gun Hill Road <laughs> are eating up the biggest pieces of the advertising pie 
that no longer goes to radio. Yeah. And um, that's one of the problems that radio has to address going forward. Thank we, you. We have got a great guest with us today. Uh, <clears throat> Michael Harrison joins us from Talkers.com. And uh, as we wrap up here with everybody, let's start with IQ. IQ, uh, what, what did you think of today's program, and how do we get your books, my friend? I'm amazed at the quality of people you bring to your show. Really <laughs> amazed. Thank you very much. Uh, unbelievable quality. Um, my, my publication is a trilogy called Lifting the Veil, the True Faces of Muhammad and Islam. It is specifically directed toward the Islamic threat to humanity. <laughs> I know it sounds like a bo bombastic statement, but try to remember that Islam is 20% of humanity, is at war, has been at war for the last 1400 years against 80% of humanity. At the moment, several states in Africa are banning Islam and the Sharia law. Several states in Europe are doing exactly the same. Whether this will continue or not, I don't know. But there is a trend now. People are waking up to the threat. I'll leave it to Dan to finish. Yes, Dan. But bring us up to speed on your nonprofit and everything that you've got going on. Um, book two of um, Sad Eyes, a story about the nurse who goes up and serves in World War II. Uh, it just came out. And Amazon is on their website is saying um, inventory is down, but more are on the way. So book one and book two are 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 doing pretty good. Um, the the Biden administration has decided to turn out veterans from veterans facilities and turn them into shelters for illegal aliens in this country. And I've been writing about that and, and dealing with that. I think it's a terrible thing that we're doing to the, the men and women who have given their lives and need our help to throw them out and uh, bring in people who come across the border illegally. The hot button I have at the moment is um, <clears throat> the Biden administration is now sending, has been sending airplanes to four Central American countries to extricate a thousand people a day. 360,000 people in the last year have been flown out of Venezuela, Honduras, Cuba, and, and um, flown into the United States. The, their people didn't have to go down to the border the southern border of Mexico and trek all the way up to the northern border. They were put in airplanes supplied by the United States government and brought into the United States as illegals, but they came in. 367,000 have been brought in and nobody knows about it. Save money on passports. How do you know about it? Yes. How do I know about it? I was getting ready to ask that question. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> that, that one begged to be asked. <laughs> Uh, I have a lot of contacts in Washington who tell me what's going on and where to look. And so they'll give me a, they'll give me a keyhole and I'll work my way through the keyhole and find different pieces of information. This program is sponsored and paid for by Homeland Security. They're paying to, to and, and these people are coming across. Homeland Security is bringing in 300 and some odd thousand illegal um, immigrants, um, and I'm, I'm not afraid to use that term, uh, without anybody knowing it, but your contacts and you. That's very interesting. Well, I'm sure there are other people who know about it, but I'm the only one that I can find. It's very few people are writing about it or talking about it. Why not? Why aren't they? Because they're afraid. Why aren't you afraid? Because I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have a dump button. Is, is anything going to happen to you as a result of this? I have no idea. I have no idea. I've been writing commentary for a long time. Jim accuses me of writing using way too much ink and paper because I write so much. But uh, no, I give you some I, advice. Go digital. 
You'll save ink and paper. <laughs> I do it all. It's all done digitally. I don't. I don't publish anything anymore. Touché. It's all, it's all digital. But but the point is, I what I try to do, whether it's my foundation for veterans, where, where we work with uh, facilities all over the country. Um, uh, uh, right now, about three hundred and. 35 facilities across the country that are treating veterans with PTSD, traumatic brain injury, sleep deprivation, and suicide prevention. And we've been doing it for 12 years. Um, when we started abandoning our, our veterans, I just became enraged and, and took to my pen and my computer and started writing. Um, and so so I think that just, and I, I know we're probably over, but an observation about talk radio, if I might. The the people who are the most popular on talk radio have some very unique characteristics. They're they're good at their craft. They're usually tied in with a nonprofit helping people, and they have books. <laughs> Those three combinations make the uh, create the opportunity for that talk show host to do things that somebody who no, doesn't have a nonprofit and doesn't have and doesn't write books they're giving up two thirds of the opportunity to talk about what's going on. Um, I just have a new book out which I said called Sad Eyes. It's a story about a young woman who grows up in Waterloo, Iowa during World War II, and she decides to become a nurse. And she joins the Army Medical Corps. And I wrote the story because of a lot of other stories that I wrote about what's going on in the country today. I think that one of the things that's going on in our country is that the left is degrading women and girls. They're allowing transsexual males to go into women's sports and compete and beat them and take away opportunities that a separate sports facility would take place. The, the women's movement did nothing, has done nothing, to the thousands of migrant, work, migrant people who are crossing the southern border and trekking up through Mexico that are being raped, children and women. And so I wrote this book because I think that one of the things that's missing in America today is that young girls and young women don't have many heroes. And this is a story about a woman who was a patriot who became a hero for what she did for her, her brothers and sisters in the military. Um, and so I, I think it's important to do is uh, be as involved as many things as I possibly can be in based on my schedule and my ability. But I, I think talk radio is, is for me core of how I do other things around talk radio. I'm well, glad I had the opportunity to meet you. Well, Michael, uh, as we as we wrap up here, uh, bring us up to speed on everything you're involved in, because you 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 are busier than a fruit merchant, my friend. I really can't uh, bring us up to speed on everything I'm involved in. I'm involved in more things than I have time to talk about. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm I consider myself blessed to be active, just like Dan, just like you. And um, this has been a great show, very interesting, um, lots of uh, input, and I'm glad that you gave me an opportunity to speak. Anybody who wants to know about what I do, go to talkers.com. It's all there. You know, I have a podcast, and we do the conference, and I have the group Gun Hill Road. Go to gunhillroadmusic.com. That's my passion right now. Or go to see scammersvideo.com. And um, just uh, stay alert, stay aware, uh, don't believe everything you read and everything you hear. And, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, I had a really good time here. And uh, I'll tell you something, Jiggy James, I enjoyed being here and appreciate the time you gave me to talk about myself. So thank you. Well, we, we appreciate you, my friend. And uh, that about wraps Thanks, up Mike. here. Thanks, Michael. Thanks from our uh, big broadcast and there goes the amazing uh head man over at talkers magazine 
And that is that. Thanks for joining us. And we will inevitably, as I say, see you next time. Peace and chicken grease, everybody. And uh, you have.